think today's a great opportunity to make a video on a very problematic car that I'm working on right now. That's putting out a bit of smoke still. Okay. This is the uh, 2000 Volvo Cross Country. It's been sitting for about a year and I'm about to take it out. It's got a terrible misfire and it's not the kind that sets a light while stationary so I'm going to take it out for a drive. See if I can get it to put a light on. All these nice drops of oil here, including this little pile. That was about 20 minutes of idling it. It's got a bad leak on the turbo. I think maybe the seals are blown on it and it's it's putting the oil through. Um, and it's dripping oil from the cold side of it. So I'm going to say blown turbo. It is the SE version of the V70 Cross Country, which is really cool. It's beautiful in terms of its interior. It's got both of the booster seats there. Near perfect leather. You know, the common stuff where it starts to crack here. and um, This always starts to fall down. Let's see how it drives. Might leave me stranded, it might not. The ABS light's on for maybe a wheel speed sensor. If it was the ABS unit, I believe the brake light would be on as well. That's what happened with my 99 T5. Oh. See if you can see the shake here in the mirror. Yeah, it's pretty bad. 154,000 miles. You know, I did everything. I did a compression test. I got no more than 100 PSI wet on all cylinders. There goes the ABS light. Something's rubbing. Let's see. Maybe the bumper in the back. The low coolant light is on because a very common thing with these cross countries I shouldn't just say the cross countries, the whole P80 chassis. There's a sensor that goes here on the bottom of these tanks, and it goes faulty. Easy fix. It's nice of them to tell you that you're low on coolant. Okay. Yeah, it's a bit loose here. I don't know if that's enough to be rubbing. I did put the other side up. There we go. Right here in the front. That would do it. This whole panel is loose. There's the fan kicking on finally. Yep. All right, let's go pull that panel off and then we can continue our test drive. It really is a beautiful car though. It needs a ton of work. It's just, uh, it's an old victim. I've got issues with the power steering. Needs to be bled, that misfire, it's been driving me crazy. I swapped coil packs from one working car to another. I swapped the injectors for my cross country there. And they uh, didn't do anything. Fuel pressure was good, 55 PSI, right where it should be. It's got an issue with, I think, the drain back valve where it's losing pressure rather quickly. It takes a while to crank up, of course. Still amazing turning radius on these cars. And let's check out how much smoke there is under here. You see the previous owner mixed up all the wires for the spark plugs. He added an extra ground wire. Uh, I did straighten out the coil pack wiring as to which goes where. Make sure everything's good there. It's a bad miss. I mean, there's gotta be a light for it sooner than later. blue tape here, the scotch tape, is because there's still some amount of fiberglass in those plastic panels, which makes my arms rather itchy. I love looking at the comparisons between two cars side by side. It's just a lot of fun for me. Uh, one more important thing, a necessity. Anytime you're taking a car out for a drive where it's got a leak, because you don't want to blow up and have to answer questions to police. It's scary, but it runs. I want to take it out on the open road, put some power to it, see if I can get it to set a check engine light under load. If I had it idling for maybe 40 minutes and it just wouldn't, you know, I would rev it. 
etc. It just did not want to put a light on. So we got Bosch Platinum spark plugs. We've got coils that are OEM Volvo. What else could it be? The low compression numbers, that's right. Thanks for reminding me. Those low compression numbers should be a cause of concern because it was cold, 90 PSI almost on all cylinders. I got 120 on cylinder five. At warm compression, I love that house, beautiful. At warm compression, still 90 to 100. Wet, it got up to, I think, 120 on each cylinder. Uh, is the bottom end just toasty on this car? Is it time to retire? More than likely. People don't take care of them. If you can, I mean, we're getting some compression, which is good. So I'm not, I'm not gonna posit any uh, conclusions. But there's so many things that could go wrong, and you know that. Piston rings, burn valves. I've seen several burn exhaust valves on cylinders three, on uh, certain cars like older 850s, etc. Uh, overheating will do it. Shakes pretty bad too. Brakes feel nice, the tires are low, but when you accelerate, the whole car's just got a nice shimmy. Look at that. That's terrible. All right, we got an open road, no speed bumps here. I'm gonna give it some power. Hopefully it don't catch on fire. ourselves a blinking check engine light just for a moment there still cruises like a beauty I gotta tell you these cars are so comfortable oh man this is so frustrating do you see that the oil light just blipped what oh looks like misfire is gone what I need to add some oil hold on okay misfire is gone for some reason the uh, check engine light's on, which is good. I can diagnose it from there. Huge oil leak. And the radio says off, which means that somebody's put in the wrong code too many times. So it's locked itself out. I've heard that you have to leave the key on for like 45 minutes or just go for a long drive and it'll allow you to put the code in again. Well, would you look at that? Cylinder two misfire detected. Just cylinder two. That is the only code. Now, it's doing a thing where it uh, bounces around the RPM until it figures out where to shift. Probably because it learned that there's a misfire, so it's being real gentle with itself. They're very smart transmissions. i got to give them a little more credit than uh, the old hunk of junk 240 transmission, the automatic. Which still learns to an extent. Gives me something to work with here, cylinder 2 misfire. However, it might also just be bad compression on that cylinder. I think that one had my lowest numbers. All my paper's in there somewhere. But uh, I think I'm done for today because I may have actually just run out of oil and I can't keep topping this thing off and driving it around.